there. So if students, they don't have classes per se. They don't have required classes. What do they do? What do you do? What do you do? Is it about your school? It's not about me. No, no, no. That's an interesting question. Now you asked a different question. You said to me, what do you do? Me. What do the students do? What do I do? There is no such generalization anymore than I can say, what do the people in your town do? This is the same kind of a question. This is like a town, right? We have a bunch of people, different ages, different interests, different capabilities, different skills who want to spend their time differently and with different people. And they meet different people and they, they are, they're certainly not grouped in any way. People don't come into your town. I don't know where you live, but wherever it is it makes no difference. They don't come into your town. Okay. Now all the 40 year olds go here and all the 30 year olds go in this group and so forth. You group yourselves according to people you want to be with. You pursue your interests when you can and you set yourself goals and work on them. And they do that all the time. And the beautiful part of this is that they can really do what they want to do as long and as hard as they want. And I want to come back to that right now because I know you're familiar with Malcolm Gladwell's book, Outliers. I haven't read it, but I'm familiar with it. Yeah. Read it. Okay. (laughs) It's a book about extraordinary people. And that's why it's called, it's called Outliers. And He makes a lot of interesting points in that book. And one of his chapters is called 10,000 Hours. And in that book, he he says one of the things that characterizes people who really achieve significant things in the world is that they have persisted in pursuing those passions for 10. He uses that as sort of a symbol for 10,000 hours. They've been able to focus on them as long as they want. And the interesting thing is that most people are like that if given the chance. And my thesis is that most people are extraordinary if given the chance. If you look at little kids, if you look at yourself, I mean, when you have a project that you really love and are interested in, do you say, well, I'll work on it between 10 and 1 and tomorrow work? I mean, you don't do anything resembling what's done in a school. You immerse yourself in it, right? Unless you have another project. Right, right. Right? And, And you do it until you're satisfied that the job is done properly. And certainly it's true when you write a book. <clears throat> so the the notion, and this is true of anything that you do. I mean, I don't know if you have a hobby, but say say you like to ski, just right. as an example. If you like to ski, then you want to go out there in the slopes and ski and get better and learn how to do things you right. couldn't do before and stuff like that. It, so then everybody is an outlier. Everybody has the potential to excel at something. They don't have to change history, but they can be really good at what they do. And in fact, human beings are driven to do what they want to do well. Everybody wants to do really well at their hobby. Don't so they- I, still, I, I still fear that people watch this won't understand what the school is like. Can you tell, can you tell what it looks like there, Let's what people are that. doing? Wait, wait, stop. Let's look at Alex de Tocqueville, who came to America in the early part of the 19th century and couldn't figure out what on earth could this country possibly look like. He came to this and he wrote about it, right? Tocqueville's visit to America. He said, this is weird. It's chaotic. What, what, what do people do there? I come from France. There's a king. There are, there are dukes. There are this. People are organized in a way. They know what their place in the, in the society is. And here I am in a country. Nobody tells anybody what to do. God knows what they do all day. They do the crazy. Sorry. They do the That's craziest. Okay. I have a phone and, going too. We're both getting called. There you go. It, it's a crazy thing. So. And he had to, he had to really readjust, and he never quite got it, because you have to readjust yourself to ask yourself not, not what do people do, but what kind of an environment is this? This is an environment that mirrors the environment of adults in the community at large. People do everything. They can be interested in everything. They can be pursuing different activities. They can be doing, some people can be doing sports sometimes. Some people can be reading. Some people can be organizing a seminar. Some people can be writing. Some people can be painting. They can be doing, and they are. They're doing everything. They're spending a tremendous amount of time talking, which, of course, we all do. Mm -hmm. And, in fact, everything about our school, and I I, I don't spend a lot of time talking negatively about other other educational institutions, but, but maybe it'll help people understand that everything about our school is polarly opposite to everything they associated with associated with the school. In, in, in regular schools, your interest periods are broken up into arbitrary time lengths so that you can, you can be in an art class and start an art painting. You'll have to stop at the end of the period and you won't be able to resume it until you come back the next art period, whenever that is. It's true right across the board. 
that is 180 degrees different. In a regular educational situation, you're grouped with people of your more or less of your own age, which means that you don't have any of the of the of the of the interactions that are socially normal with people of different ages. Which of course we do all of our lives. I mean, how boring would your life be if you couldn't interact with people? I couldn't talk more, to you. More, yeah. Well, I'm an ancient. I'm a dinosaur. But I mean, you know, people within anybody you want. Right. I, mean, do you, I don't know if you have a family, but I you do. must. Yes. Well, do you have kids? I have four kids. Do you interact with them all the time? Yeah. Do you like that? I, I like you? them more what? than I like most people. I think that talking so, talking to my eight, what? six, four, and one year old is great fun. I'm glad you talked about the one year old. We'll come back to your one year. Is it a boy or girl? They're all girls. They're all girls. Sorry, poor thing. I get that a lot. <laughs>